Hello there, guys. It's me, Brian Cockrell, on the Tax Fund Show. I've got a fantastic guest today, Troy Shaw's daughter, Katrina. Katrina, welcome to the show. It's Chetina, Brian. Chetina. Katrina, sorry, yeah, yeah. It's be... right, I'll forgive you. I'll tell you what, Brian, call me Tina. That's easy, yeah? Well, Tina, can I just um, ask you about your dad and what he was like? What he was like? Yeah, what was he like? Well, he was very unique. Right. Um, I've never met anybody like him. 100% man. Hasn't got a feminine side. I know most men have. My dad didn't have one. Yeah. Um, he was loyal. He was trustworthy. I loved him so much. I still love him. Um, I think about him. And I talk to him every day. I know I sound crazy. But uh, he was... Um, a very good man, and you will never meet another man like him. They broke them out. Right. And I'm very proud to say I'm his daughter. Right. Um, people speak to me about Roy, and I never met Roy, but um, I'd love to meet him. But he, he seemed to be like a man's man. One of them people will shake your hand, and he'd he have a bond with you, and he'd keep that bond and keep his word, people say to me. Oh, he, he was, you could trust him. You could trust him with anything. And he had an ability. He... He was very much in touch with his instincts. Right. And he had a ability to, and he always used to say to me, you're too nice, you always see the good. He used to get a gut instinct about someone, and I used to think, no, they're nice. He was always spot on, always. Yeah. But when you're in that, in that, in that game, when you're running about and you're, you're having fights and things like that, you've got to have that instinct, or you won't survive. Yeah, well, you've won him on your side, trust me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Yeah, it's like when we used to, we did the same type of things, right? But I'm, I'm obviously, he was a, a little bit older than me. But people would get the best fighters, like like Roy Shaw. They'd rather have a one Roy Shaw with them than a hundred nobodies with them. And Roy would stand out and they think, oh, we don't, we're not messing about it's Roy Shaw's with him. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I just want to get to, we're going to get to um, these lies that have been spoken about your dad, about people have been writing books and everything. Have you ever um, contributed to any books? Um, on your dad, I did. Yeah, I um, I did um, a tribute to my dad for Young Joe Pyle. He's brought out a book called Unlicensed. Right. And uh, I was more than happy to do it. I thought it was very um, courteous of him to ask me to be involved. He asked me through a mutual friend, Wendy, and um, I read the book. And Joe Pyle. He was friends with Dad and Lenny McLean. So I was a bit dubious at what I was going to be reading. Because if it was me, it's easy. I'm team Dad all the way. But I was amazed. I mean, the, the guy should write books for a living. You know, he he was really fair. He was really respectful. Nice. And I'm telling you now, Brian, if, if you said to my dad, listen, you know, when you're dead, I'm going to write a book and make money on you, he'd go, good luck, son. Fair play. So if you're going to write stuff about my dad... Keep it respectful. Keep it true. There's a story in the um, Joe book. He says that uh, Lenny McLean, I, I can't remember the setup, but he was in the ring and he had marks on his back and he's going, yeah, that's where I've got shot so-and-so, that's where I've got stabbed so-and-so. Anyway, my dad's walked past and said, um, how comes it all in your back? What, was you running away? <laughs> and that is, that is the sort of thing my dad would say. So, and, you know, and, you can tell, and Joe loved my dad. And my dad loved Joe, you know. Yes. Um, and once you got his love, you've got his loyalty, and you know, and it, he didn't, he doesn't deserve to be disrespected. He, he was, he deserves to rest in peace because I bet that poor brother's spinning in his grave. I mean, you can see I've got my dad behind me. Yes, I can my see. dad is in every room of my house. Yes, you know, because I can't live without him, and I have to. So, you know, right. I, right. Well, I was speaking to you before, and you were saying. If anybody written a book, if it was anyone was writing a book about my dad or a film, you wouldn't be bothered as long as the truth was told and it was done with dignity and pride. Yeah, no muggy stuff. And then um, there's this book come out by my dad's other son, Gary. Um, right. And but there's quite a story behind that actually, but we'll come to that later. Um, my point about this book, it's not only, I mean. I'm not going to nitpick. I'm not going to go through all the little details. Like my granddad's name was Harry, not Henry. Uh, my mum's and dad's shop was in Forest Gate, not Manor Park. I mean, I know the family history. But, right. I mean, all right, I'll, I'll let that all that shit go, right? Yes. Some things in that book that I can't let go, and I won't be associated to that book in any way, shape or form. 
Right. He, he keeps advertising it by the Shaw family. Well, who the fuck am I then? So I'm not involved in that book. So what is he? Is he misleading people and letting them associate my name to this heap of shit? Because I don't want to be a... I mean, look at it. Look, I mean, my dad was... He was something special. Look at that. It looks like a fucking comic book. I mean, can you say? <laughs> you know what, uh, Peter? You're not the first person to say that. And uh, he's done it to a lot of people. He's written books about people who have passed away. And he's disrespected all the family of all these people. He's doing the same thing to your dad as well. Oh, he doesn't care. All he's interested in is money. And I can't believe that um, my brother's on board with this. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah. I love my brother. I always will. He's my brother. Yes. But, um, and I really did not, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I really did not want to go against my own brother publicly. But you put me in a corner and I, I haven't got a choice. I can't. The thing is, Brian, there are, my dad's got, I know it sounds crazy, but he has got a huge fan base. Huge. Yes. And a lot of these people, they didn't know dad. The people that did know my dad, they know. I ain't got to say nothing. Right? But, I mean, I, I get messages from people. And one guy stands out. He, he was being abused his whole life. And, oh, bless him. Anyway, he, I mean, he's a grown man now, but his dad's book come out. I mean, I can't remember when that Katie Cray book come out, but he, that book come <laughs> out and he, he, was, he, was, he tried to take his own life. He was in a place and someone tossed him the book and he read it and my dad inspired him. He said, it made me look like for the man that I've got inside myself. He said, and training is what got dad through prison. Yeah, and my dad always said, and he was always fit, right up until he couldn't train anymore, you know. And, uh, you know, if you've got a healthy body, it helps your mind and it gives you that strength and the confidence to be the man that you can be. And this guy idolised my dad. Now, there's a lot of people out there. I mean, and then John Mason, my, my brother, is not met his dad. You know, they're going to be researching, they're going to be listening to everything that they can get their hands on if they're idolising it. And my dad would have loved it that so many people look up to him. You know, he would have loved that. He would have got so much pleasure from it. I've forgotten what I was saying. It's okay. Yeah. So, what, Tina, so the author, Jamie Bowler, this book, who's written the book, has never spoken to you ever because he's telling people he has spoken to you. No, no, and he's put it in his book that he's spoken to me. So it's just lies again from you. Yeah. I, I, I did leave some messages, you know, like, I'm the Shaw family. And then he starts putting things like, by Roy Shaw's only biological son, well, he isn't. All right, they didn't know that, but he isn't. And he was still implying that I didn't exist, which I find very offensive because I had a different kind of relationship with my dad than what Gary did. And I'm not saying that's right. I'm not saying, I mean, it's no secret. Dad didn't like Gary. Gary didn't like dad, right? No secret. Right. I always had Gary's back, you know. It, but, um, no, it, this, this book, I, I have got to discredit it. I'm sorry, there's too much in it that, that's not untrue. My dad deserves to be remembered. And these people that follow my dad, they deserve to know the truth. Exactly, yeah. He, 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 he was a legend, and he did that all himself. He didn't plan anything. He fell into stuff. He wasn't a bank robber. He, he's done a post office van and got caught. Cool. He didn't get 18 years, he got 15, he done 10. Um, Gary refers to us um, romping around the grounds in Broadmoor. Um, yeah, that, that, that sounds ludicrous to me. Right, well, I'll tell you what happened. Right, thank you. I sent you a photo, actually, of Dad with me and Gary. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that was in Broadmoor. Um, I think Gary still had a nappy on. Um, I was about three, maybe four. Um, what happened was my mum, she was Maltese, her family, she hadn't told them that my dad had gone to prison, yeah, so he, uh, and they had only photos of dad with the children, so um, dad had to get special permission to have photos, and that is, <laughs> that is what happened, we had a photo taken with her dad, but it was a, it's a top security um, place for the, the most dangerous people in the country. Yeah. Why the fuck would they let them romp around Broadmoor's grounds with their children? I mean, come on. 
Good point, good point. Yeah. Uh, can I just ask you, um, length and short, <laughs> which is another load. I know it's loaded, Chris, but I've got to ask you these things so people want to know these questions. Uh, you had run around with like uh, cycling shorts on. <laughs> right. No, no, I'm not having that. Right. I'm, I, I cannot have that. Um, sorry, I'm not Dad, I'm doing this for you, right? Um, what happened was, I used to go out with my dad quite a lot for a night out, and he was a party animal. We never let you finish when the pub closed or anything. So we, more often than not, we'd end up around his house. And of course, we've been out for a night out. He's all suited and booted. So he'd go into his room and put something more comfortable on, like shorts and a T-shirt or jogging bottoms or, or something. Anyway, one day, it was just me and him, one day he come running in the front room and he had these light pro cycling shorts on. And they weren't for us, you know, they might have had a stripe up the side or something, but it was a joke. So he stood, he's gone, Dad, I've gone, Dad, they're obscene. Go and take them off, go put something else on right now and promise me you won't go out in public because you will be arrested. Yeah. Now, I told this over to my brother. Oh, his, I mean, his wife was my best friend. She was like my sister. In fact, I think I loved her more than Gary, you know, and... Um, yeah, so I told her it. So it could have been either of them. Um, but that's what happened. My dad would never use the changing clubs in the country club for starters. <laughs> he would never go out in fluorescent yellow um, fucking cycling shorts. And he, my dad, you didn't meet him. If you met him, if you walked into a room, you knew he walked in that room. He was immaculate before he got ill, all right? Um, he was immaculately dressed, he was always well groomed. I mean, he was a bit pain. He used to give me skincare tips. Yeah, you know, if I looked a bit tired, he'd tell me to throw cold water on my face. <laughs> he was so funny, but you know, he doesn't deserve to be that's muggy. It's muggy. Um, I know people, you know, want to put stuff in to sell books, but I mean, come on. You know, he doesn't deserve to be disrespected like that. Yeah, I'm really not comfortable with having to speak out about my brother, but I don't feel that I have a choice, Brian. Yeah. You're doing this because of the love you had for your dad uh, and the love you had for you. Um, there was a video done with um, Sean Atwood, with your brother speaker on there. Was, there was a few untruths <laughs> on that. Could, we go, could you go into that, please? Well, what can I say? All right, Brian, if you was to say to me now, can you tell me some stories about your dad? Yeah. I could tell you years off. All day long I do. I do to everybody else, you know. I've got loads of stories. I'm not for selling my stories, and please make it clear to people, I'm not getting any money for this. No. I'm doing nothing, this. Nothing, none, none of us are. Yeah. But for me, dad's reputation. Yes. Yeah? Oh, no. Sorry, Brian. Brian, what the show that would show, yeah? Yeah. No, and... Um, Oh. Oh. No, someone's at the door there and it's distracted me. What was I saying? Sorry. You were about the stories about your dad and the Sean, Sean Atwood show when they were um, talking about him and saying things that weren't true about him running around with his downstairs out and things like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm totally disgusted with um, a lot of the things in there. I did send you the clips. I mean, maybe if you play them and we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You're fat. Yeah, and then we can go through it one by one. Yeah. All that, yeah? I'm yeah. happy to do that. Yeah. So, um, did he eat glasses, uh, pint glasses and bite them and eat them? I know it sounds mental. Oh Another thing what's been said by this ludicrous person from where we live from. <laughs> well, put it this way. Um, if everyone ate glass, wouldn't they, wouldn't they die? I mean, my dad, if he used to get drunk, oh, he could be a, a bit of a knob sometimes. I mean, what bloke isn't when they're drunk? But he'd take a bite out of glass. Like, oh, it, was a, it was a gimmick. Of course, he didn't fucking eat it. He'd be dead, wouldn't he? Wouldn't he? Um, yeah. As he's eating it down to the stem, I mean, come on. I mean, come on. Yeah. You know, I mean, like I said, if you was to ask me if I've got stories about my dad, you can rest assured we certainly wouldn't be sitting there discussing my dad's penis. And Gary seemed to mention my dad's penis quite a lot in his interview, which I find very disturbing, very muggy and very disrespectful. Yeah. Had to I mean, I know I'm going to get trolled for this podcast. I don't care. It's the only one I'm doing, Brian. I said to you, I'm not after fame. I'm not after fortune. I've got everything I need. I've got everything I want right here. My circle's small. 
but I like it. It's just yeah. there I want it. Life for me is good. I just need some peace. Yes. And I want my to have some peace too, you know. Yeah, so what about the Malta incident? Uh, right. See, this is another thing. He's making me dad look mad. Um, and I know the story as well. Uh, dad and mum, they got married in um, Orme, in Malta. It's a little tiny old-fashioned village. They didn't have a reception. They went into a bar. They're all doing toasts. And they are really religious out there. And uh, this was just around the corner to mum's house. There was, um, in the bars, they have all the Madonna and the Jesus and all that, because they're really religious. Anyway, Dad went, we're all having a toast. He went, oh, look, she ain't got a drink. Yeah, I'll have one on me and threw a drink at him. He didn't swear about the Madonna. He threw a drink at it. Everyone walked out. Right. That, in the Atwood interview, Gary goes on to say, and he's confused it with another story that he's got out of Dad's book, but... <laughs> No, the, dis the book that is discrediting, but we'll get back to that. But, um, yeah, so th then there was another fight when um, Dad had taken Mum and my Auntie Chettina, that's who I'm named after, thanks. Um, yeah, they, they, he took them out for a night out, and some sailors were trying to get it on with my Mum. Ended up a big fight. The police came. They couldn't control it. Dad offered to help. Anyway, he got arrested. They don't just come out and say, don't do that again, and let you go back in the bar, they they take you, anyway, the, the long and short of that story is, um, Dad already had connections in Malta anyway, and there was the hard man, the Malta, Dad thought he would have a problem with him, and he didn't, they become really good friends, that's the long and short of it, everything else is bollocks, right, and I'm rubbishing that because yeah. I've heard the stories myself from my dad's mouth, and um, yeah. Yeah, and... Um... I'll just say, ask you about the. Some, he said he had tapes, unheard tapes that they, that they were going to write in the book. Can you explain about these tapes and and what how they're about? Like yeah, dict dictaphone record, dictaphone record. Sorry, yeah. 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 Um, right. What happened was when Dad was alive, he really, really, really wanted his film to be made about his life. He um, was very happy with the Kate Cray book. I mean, that's another thing. This Jamie Boyle's rubbish in the Kate Cray book. Um, so is Gary. Um, Kate Cray and my dad, they were really good friends. Um, he was more than happy with that book. Right. I mean, she was one of a few friends. When dad got ill, I mean, his friends, I mean, there was only a thought there was a few. Yeah. Right. And she was, I mean, she used to phone him and chat to him for hours. I mean, and then she'd phone me. And say, listen, I just hope your dad and a bit well, you know, she was a good friend to him. And you know, anyway, um, yeah, so dad wanted the film based on Pretty Boy. So when dad died, to be honest, Brian, I'd had about six and a half years of sheer hell. Yeah. Looking after my dad. And right. I did it on my own. I didn't have any help, right? I did it all on my own. Um Anyway, so when Dad died, a lot of people come out and they were all asking us about this film. So, I mean, I said to Gary, he did, I mean, my dad was talking top draw. He was talking about Guy Ritchie doing it and Ray Winston playing him. He had what he wanted in his head. He had about three or four, I'm not sure how many scripts, but he liked some bits in one, but not in the other. Do you know what I mean? So anyway, I said to Gary, he said, you know, we, we should put this, together for dad I said listen if we can put it together the way dad would have wanted it yeah we'll do it and I lost my mum five days after my dad so I felt quite alone it was just me and Gary um we only had each other you know uh, anyway um yes yeah, so we was doing this together anyway I gave him the scripts and anyone that called I passed them on to Gary speak to my brother Anyway, uh, when we was uh, um, when when Dad died, I didn't just have all the legal stuff. I had to deal with his house. My daughter was living in my dad's house with a dog at the time, and then we had to sell it. And there was a lot of problems selling it because it had to be under what. Anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, but I had to empty the house. Anyway, Gary he kindly offered to come and help me empty my dad's house. Right. While we was emptying his bedroom, I've opened the drawer and I've come across these dictaphone tapes. So me, because I'm a bit of a div, 
Um, so I've got the bag, bin bag, I'm clearing out. They're no good. Those got. So he's gone, what are you doing with them tapes? I went, listen, they're no good. Who's got a dictaphone these days? So I thought, he went, no, no, no. He went, they must be from um, when Dad done the book with Kay Cray. So I thought, oh, okay, because they'd be helpful for the film. Yeah. yeah. So I gave it to Gary. I said, listen, look, can you deal with this for me? I mean, because I've been dealing with everything. I'm worn out. I'm just saying, Brian, I'm really worn out. They were the worst years of my life. I can't tell you. Um, Anyway, so I trusted Gary to do this. Anyway, then in the meantime, somebody had bought the rights to Dad's film from the people that the publishers. Um, and this guy, he called me, and in all fairness, he sounded like a right nice bloke, but he wasn't what Dad had in, had in mind to right. be him in this film. So, and how courteous of him, he said, like, we want you on board, you know, I'm a really good actor at least, give me a chance. But he didn't look like anything like my dad. In fact, what happened was, dad's pretty boy book was coming up on Facebook with this guy's face on it, and it fucking infuriated me. Um, but that's by and by. Anyway, and he was doing it with um, a piss pot company, mm -hmm. a low budget company. Anyway, they're still doing it, but they've not got my blessing. I think, I don't know, they might have Gary's. I know that he went and met them, but he didn't tell me about it. But, I mean, that doesn't matter. Um, and Gary, he is entitled to put his story out there. He's He's got every right. And if he can make money on it, good luck. But tell the fucking truth. Yeah. Don't muck my dad off, because he doesn't deserve it. And I won't have it, not when I put breath in my body. And if anyone knows me, and my brother Gary does, I'm not one to keep this mouth shut or to be put in the corner. Now, I did keep my mouth shut, but it's gone too far. Now, these tapes, um, they're not Kate Praise because I asked her. Um, Gary is saying that they were made in 2006, 2007, when Dad first started losing his mind. Right, well, let me just correct that. Right. My dad started losing his mind in 2004. My nan died in 2004, February, and I know that because I fell pregnant with my daughter Rosina, hence right. her being called Rosina. Right. And when I was pregnant with her, I hadn't seen dad with dad around, and then I saw him and I moved to Suffolk. So as for me doing everything for dad, because I live closer, I didn't live closer, I lived in Suffolk. I had to sell a house that was already paid for, take a mortgage to be closer to my dad so I could look after him every day because nobody would help me, right? I had cameras all put in his house. It was a 24-hour job, and I had a baby as well. You know, it was it was really, really, really hard going. Yes, it must have been. Yeah. So, you know, that, that side of it wasn't true. And anyway, if my dad's made those tapes in 2627, mm -hmm. there was... Um, it was a firm. It was a firm, like I said, it wasn't just a corn woman, there was a few of them. Um, and they were all working together. I know who was behind it. He knows I know who it was. He knows I know it. Uh, but nothing I can do about it now. And even if I knew at the time, there would be nothing I could do about it. Do you know what I mean? But I think what's on those tapes is probably him panicking. Because what they did was they turned everyone close against him he, he they turned him against them they were playing with his mind in disgusting ways it was wicked and it was horrible to watch it was horrible and uh so i reckon when he's making these tapes he's rambling so he doesn't forget and because like i said you know he'd let someone in and then remember that he didn't like them when they left you know so i think that that's all they was but really, really <laughs> sorry to stop you really what they've done is took advantage of a man who'd lost his mind at the time i don't just with him yeah Disgusting. Yeah, I think the travellers called it grunting. Absolutely disgusting. disgusting. But, um, and, oh, he really didn't deserve it. But then he mixed in these circles. And when he did mix in these circles, he could cope with it. But then as soon as he could, and they were there like vultures. Right. And I'm telling you, the, the unsavoury characters I've had to deal with, Brian. And, listen, I ain't no gangster. You know, I've, I've been a mum since I was 17. I clean my house every day. I like being at home. You know, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm... I'm I was like a fish out of water. It was like, you know when you watch these films on the telly? Yeah. And, it, and, it, and it's really, it was like I was in one. And I'm watching all this stuff happening. And it was happening to me. And I was thinking, oh, fuck. 
Uh, it was so, it was so out of my comfort zone. I can't tell you, you know, I really can't, but I had to do it. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have any help. I did ask, I didn't get any. Um, uh, and it was, it was the hardest years of my life watching that happen to him. And, you know, but the way I see it, I really do believe in karma. I think that um, if you're good, good things happen. If you if you do take a little bit, truth but, always out, always. Yeah, you keep doing horrible things that come back on you, you do. Uh, can we just, what about the Kate Cray balcony, balcony scene or something? Yeah, right. He sat, he, he, when, when my dad came out of prison, my mum, she was seeing this older guy called Arthur. When dad came out of prison, she wanted dad. But of course, Arthur still wanted mum. And uh, one day, Dad sneaked in, and this guy's there telling her that he loves her. Anyway, my dad lost his shit and threw him off the balcony. Gary is saying that he used to jump off the balcony when he was a boy. Did he fuck jump off that balcony? He'd have broken his neck. Okay. He's saying it was a five foot drop. It wasn't. The people lived underneath our flat. Unless they were dwarfs. Yeah. But, you know, do you know what I mean? So, all right, it wasn't. I mean, when people write dwarfs, they do exaggerate. That's okay. Right? Exaggerating. Yeah. But as for lying, don't lie. You know, and then he's saying in his book that um yeah, that mum wasn't having an affair with him and that it's a secret that the Shaw family are keeping. There's no secret. Mum was shagging the geezer and dad caught her. Right. <laughs> and she she loved him. <laughs> Not like, you know, she didn't know dad was gonna come out of prison. She was seeing this guy, she fucked him off. He wouldn't go away, and Dad caught him. That's that's it. That end of, yeah. But they're just they making a big mask like he does. Jamie Boyle does this with everybody. He makes something like a, a little a little mole into a mountain now of everything. He exaggerates everything, and he, he makes stories. He's Apple. just a horrible, horrible person when he does to people, especially people's families. He always seems to do dead people because then he can get all the money off the book, and they can't fight back. But you're I can't here, say no. proud of you for your dad. For you to come out and tell the truth today. Yeah, but I mean, I get him being a low life, but his own son. Yeah, to yeah. To do with him. Oh. I mean, all right, if he wants to shut me out of his life, fine, fine. You know, I've moved on. It broke my heart at the time. It really did. But yeah. I've moved on from that now. You know, like I said, life's good, you know. And to be honest, I don't miss him. I miss her more than, like, his wife more than what I miss him. But, um, and I, I do love him. But, I mean, it's done now. There's no going back. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the G. Savile thing, right? Yeah. And that's something. I mean, he was hyping his book, The Jimmy Savile Connection. How fucking dare that? What? So, what happened here? We went to Broadmoor. I think I was about five or six. So that would have made Gary four or five. We went to Broadmoor. There was a big car outside. And everyone was talking about, I didn't know what they were talking about. I just wanted to see my dad. And when we went in there, and there was like, um, I don't know what it was. I'm not sure, like a little tea room scene. And um, my dad called me in there. He went, hey, who's that? I don't know. I went, ah, it's the man on top of the pops. And he turned around to me and he went, are you married? And I went, no. You know, and then he went, oh, what's the time? I'm late. And he went like that. And this clock fell out of his jacket. Yeah. That was our encounter, Jimmy Savile. Right. That'll talk. A minute. He did not pick us up from the station or take us to the station. He was not my dad's friend. My dad was in um, a secure unit that this guy used to go into. Right. Right. Have I made that clear? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, people yeah. told me yeah. when he was in jail, he hated nonsense, and if he got, got his hands on any nonsense, he'd give him a bat and give him a good hiding. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No way he's going to knock around with that man. So, like you say, he's in the jail because he's in the jail. So that means, it says there's a thousand people in there. Every one of them prisoners are friends with Jimmy Savile. What a load of rubbish, isn't it? Say so, no more. Say yeah. no more. Yeah. So what, what do you think? Enough, because you I don't like the idea of my dead dad being associated with the likes of him. No, I, no, I'm not in a million years. I mean, it's Jamie Boyle that fool that is making Gary say these things to sell these books. I mean, I don't know, but I'm really concerned about this um, new documentary because no, I mean that was my dad. He took them out of my dad's house, so I've got rights on those tapes because he's my dad, right? 
they've not even approached, he's not even out of courtesy said, do you mind? Oh, let me see them. I'm really concerned because I don't know what's on there. And I know how real my dad was in 2006 and 2007 because I was the one looking after him. Yeah. Um, it was the hardest time in my life. Uh, I mean, Gary puts in his books that Dad's house got burgled and they smashed the windows and he went and stayed with him for a few days. Did he fuck? Um, they didn't smash the windows, but it was me that had to do I dealt with everything and things that you couldn't make up, I was dealing with and I had no support from anybody. Right. Yeah, this documentary, these these other people, I made another one, a guy from this way, of Lee Duffy, who's a friend of mine. And they were, right. yeah, I've heard of him, but I don't know the score. The, the, the exact same thing that they've done this this family they said the family were on board and everything. And when when one of the guys went and spoke to the family, he was a, the producer, a nice little man, uh, Stewie Armstrong, he went and seen him. He said, We're not we don't want to do the film. So he said that to me by us now for a troll. I'm not doing the documentary. He cancelled it, a really respectable man. But the other company, what I've just did the lead Duffy one, they're the one I was on about doing your dads now. Uh, again, just disrespecting yeah. people's family, making things up that never existed. I mean, there's, there's, I don't know if you've heard the one where he's putting Roy, Roy Shaw and Lenny McLean were fighting and he used to throw the fight. I said, what a load of rubbish. Absolute rubbish. Well, this is it. Like you said, when people are dead, they can say what they like, can't they? Yeah. But, um, if anyone says anything wrong about my dad, well, I've got really breath in my body. Hey, dad, got your back. Not having it. Yeah. You know, like I said, I want him to be remembered as he deserves to be remembered. I've been, I mean, before you were so kind to offer me the platform to do this, yeah. I've been, I've lost, I've lost sleep. I've been trying to put it together. I've got two teenagers on board because I'm useless with anything. <laughs> and it would have just been a video and I was getting, I, I, like, it, it was consuming me. I want peace. I just want peace. I don't want nothing from no one. I don't want fame. I don't want fortune. Yeah. So my dad was my dad, and I'm proud of that. And if anyone wants to make money on him, go for it. He would have been, he would have been saying the same. Good luck to you, son. You know, whatever. But well, please not, be respectful. Yeah. Please tell the truth. Please do not mark my dad off. Well, I <laughs> yeah, and a lot of people who know your dad, like young, young Joey Powell, was fuming when he heard about Roy Shaw throwing the fights and, and uh, Lenny McLean throwing the fights. And so young Joey said, So you're saying my dad was throwing fights, Joey Powell Sr. So he's mm. got bad with them as well. So it's not just you and your own, you know, these people are getting outed by everyone. So like mm -hmm. you said, no one minds anyone writing a book and making money as long as they get the consent of the family. When we did our books, me and my wife, we go around, tape the front, tape record people, put it in the book and let them read the book. Is that okay? It's, just, it's the same as the video where I'm doing it every year. I'm going to send this to you before it goes mm. out. So I'm going to get your blessing before I put it out. And I have dignity and pride. And I just wish Roy Shaw was here today to get all the gym with Jamie Bell and see what he'd say talk to talk with him. Listen, yeah. if he was here today, Jamie Boyle, we'd be... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It, I mean, what is Gary... I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, and there's another thing, like Gary said in his book, um, when we did The Hard Bastards, the, the documentary, um, my son David, he, he has Asperger's, he's on the autistic spectrum. Um, and he got bullied so severely. He was a little tiny thing with his glasses, looked like Joe Nyman. And uh, I was going, I was dealing with it on my own. And um, yeah, it was always one thing after another. And this poor kid, and uh, I told dad, and he, we was doing this documentary, and he said, my husband was the one that took David to the boxing. Um, but my dad said, no, listen, we'll get him on the telly. Let people know that he's my grandson. He said, you know, to help him. So Gary's put in his book, yeah, you know, it was nothing. With, my grand, my kids loved my dad, apart from my my Emma. She didn't connect with him, but the others did. Okay. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, he really suffered, my little David, and my dad was trying to help him. But Gary says in his book that he used to take him to boxing and that that was all for the cameras. Yes, it was all for the cameras, but at least it's that dad did do something to try and help, you know. Um, my David went on to have a nervous breakdown. I mean, he got pushed in front of a car. People took his clothes and pissed all over him. Um, he used to come home with his glasses broken. Oh. And, you know, and I, and I couldn't deal with it. I had to try and do it the right way. I did have a lot of good help. But my son had a nervous breakdown. He had a year out of school. And then they, with, like I said, I got people on my side, um, including the local education authority, and they got him into a good school. And, you know, he, he's fine now, you know, he's, he's fine now. He's grown into a man 
that I'm really proud to be the mother of. And he's done that himself. But Gary never had anything to do with my children. He didn't help my David at all. Um, my dad did. Uh, and with my oldest son, Ronnie. Um, Ronnie was good at the boxing. Dad come to all his fights. You know, he was so, he, all the dinner shows and all that, he always supported us. He, you know, he, he was a good dad and he was a good granddad. He didn't have the same relationship uh, um, with Gary. And um, that was sad. And I, I did feel for Gary. That wasn't fair, wasn't right. But it is what it is. Yeah. You know, they didn't gel. He, he yeah. dad, you know, he, he was wrong. But if, if they don't gel, I mean, he gel, he used to go around, he loved youngsters. You know, there was Gary and Steve Math uh, in our age group that he loved the pair of them, and young Joe Pyle, like I said, you know, but he just did not gel with Gary. And, um, I think maybe Gary's been a bit spiteful now. Um, right. It's not, it's not on. Um, and I know Gary's going to be really angry with me for um, speaking out. But you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. You're doing it for your dad and the people out there. And I, and I always will. My dad was a one off. Gary's not fit to lick his boots. But you're He'll saying, never be the man like his dad was. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, you're saying that, so this new documentary, you're not happy with it at all? No. No, no, and I think that it's the yeah. right to put them tapes, not without my permission. I haven't seen them. I don't know what they're putting out there. If he wants to make a book and tell the truth, go for it. Yeah. I'm, I'm not happy with the way he's, I mean, it's been muggy. A lot of the stuff's muggy. But um, that's okay. You know, I mean, people can see it for what it is. Um, but this documentary, is he, he, he hasn't got any right there. I've got rights on them tapes. So, I mean, I don't, I mean, I'm not clever. I don't know how I stand legally. But um, I, I'm not happy for that documentary to go out until I've seen it. If I okay it, let them put it out. Otherwise, I'm not happy with it. If anyone that buys that documentary, I mean, because well, I won't be buying it. But, um, I mean, I didn't buy this book. I'd like to make that very clear. I did not buy this book. Somebody gave it to me. <laughs> it's toilet paper. I'm going to say that. You're going to put it in the toilet. <laughs> yeah, so, so what I was going to say, um, your dad was uh, a man's man. He was out there, he kept his word, he shook your hand, that was his bond. He was just a lovely man. And, and that I remember a story, David Ashton, um, you, you won't know him, but he was about five, sorry, about eight years old when he met your dad and he came around with Joey, Joey Pyle Senior and he was a little chap and your dad was sat at the table and he said his hands were massive. And I kept saying, oh, <laughs> he said, I kept staring at his hand and he went, come on, you. And, and Roy put his hands up and sat pretend at the box with him. So David, who is a barrister now, David says, my my uh, my um, thing with the Roy Shaw was as bad with uh, Roy Shaw, but I was only eight at the time. He did loads of charity work, you know. Yeah. I mean, my dad, oh, he yeah, he was a legend, and he, you know, he was one of, but he never found happiness. No. And I find that really sad, you know. He never found happiness. He suffered. A lot, you know, and um, yeah, he was still a good man, you know, and I that, think, that yeah. hurts that he didn't find happiness. Yeah, I think he did. Um, He's looking down at you saying, good on you, go on, my girl, go on, tell the no, truth. I'll tell you what, Brian, the dreams I have, I mean, the, the one I had the other week, um, and it was so vivid, and you know when you wake up and you feel, oh, I didn't want to wake up, I haven't finished, yeah. it was one of them ones. And he was, he, he looked really young and he was really slim, right. and he was quite trendy and he was really happy here she is because that's what he used to say to me whether he was happy or angry you go here she is or here she is you know it depended and he was like here she is come here little darling and then all this stuff and I, and I covered him and I went oh daddy I, I like you like this much better it's better than being all muscle bound and yeah. he started laughing and I woke up <laughs> yeah um, yeah but yeah I hope he's giving people nightmares that's all I can say. Yeah. No, I, I, I miss him so much. Well, even, then, even, even the people who are doing this documentary, the people have not them contacted either. I, no, it's not, like I don't well, exist, which I really um, am offended because, like I said, I won't do anything anyway. I I don't want any money. I don't want any fame. I'm, I'm old. I just want to live my life in peace. I'm not interested in all that. But I like a bit of respect. I think I'm entitled to a bit of respect because I was his daughter. You know, and um, I think that they should at least say to me, Is that I don't want the money from it, I 
keep it. If it, you know, keep it. I don't need it. But where, where respect is concerned, you know, come and show me in first, or at least ask. You know, not. I mean, block me on everything and turn your back on me. I, I, I mean, I'm his fucking sister. And and as for Jamie Boyle, I mean, who is he? Some northern geezer that writes lies about people in books. You've got him in one. <laughs> You yeah. know, so. Any any funny stories about your dad? Oh, I've got loads. Oh, then quite. I'll, I'll tell you one. Right. I'll tell you. Right. When when I had my um my first baby, my my dad didn't find out I was pregnant until a a month before I was having him, so I was too scared to tell him. And uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, he yeah. didn't get on with mum. Um, my husband, he was a bit anyway. In those days, in the maternity world, you get an hour visit. Yeah, that's all. Right. So my baby, he was born at one o'clock in the morning on Friday the thirteenth, which my dad had a thing about. He told me to call him Damien. Um, <laughs> and, uh, what they did, because he was he was small, they took him straight from me. They put him in the um, special care unit, and I'm up on the ward. In those days, you had a smoking room, so I'm sitting there like fag ash now, and I've heard my dad. Yeah, where's Regina? Where's my daughter? No, sir. You can't come in here. We have a visiting hour. Go on, fuck off, Tina! He's going and he's walking through the maternity unit. But Tina, come on, Dad. So she's going, no, sorry, sir. You cannot come in here. I should call the police. They didn't have security in them days. I should call the police. He went, call all your fucking like. Where's my tea? Are you all right? I went, yeah, Dad, I'm all right. Please. I said, listen, my mum and dad, they're divorced. We, we can't have mum, dad and my husband's visiting time so, so please can we have five minutes she went no no i'm going to call the police i mean call her you fucking like where's the baby i mean i don't know dad. i was crying because they'd taken the baby so he's gone down to the special care as well where's my grandson where's my... but he just wanted to see that we were all right right yeah you know and, and uh, i used to get really annoyed with him because i mean honestly he was a fucking pain in the ass sometimes I, honestly i ain't gonna lie <laughs> he, he drives me mad i mean I, he hated me having boyfriends Hated oh, I can imagine, you know, I can imagine being boyfriend. Who's your dad, right? <laughs> Must have been shitting themselves coming to the house. <laughs> and I said to him, look, you know, no one wants to go out with my boyfriend. Because they know you're my dad. He went, listen, darling, he went, if I bother them, if they're bothered about me, then they're not worthy of you. And at the time, that wasn't a good enough excuse. But now I'm a mum and I can see what he meant. And he's right, you know. Yeah. You know, I mean... I've never been so, I mean, and that's another thing that was brought up in that book. You know, even Chetina said on the documentary that, you know, she was frightened of her dad. When I was a kid, yeah, I was terrified of him because I was a little bastard. I was going in the pubs at 14. Instead of going to school, I used to put clothes on under my uniform. And I used to go in the pub, getting pissed, drinking pints of lava, playing darts and playing pop. I've been pulled out by the school board man. My dad was probably more terrified of what was happening to me than what I was, of what he would do to me. When I got older, um, we become really good friends. We, he, he was the best friend, you could tell him. I've just buried someone in the back garden there, and he'd, he'd have it covered. He would, you could tell him anything, and he would have your back, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then there's other stories about the debt collecting. Right. Right. Well, I think Dad did do debt collecting, but he didn't keep their money. He would have given it back to them. You know, I know that, um, yeah, Gary said about when Dad loaned him that money. He loaned Gary 800 um, and he wanted a 1,000 back. He did do that. He did charge Gary interest. I then gave him the money and I pulled my dad. I said, what were you doing charging him interest? He went, I've charged him interest because I don't want him to keep thinking it's all right to ask to borrow money off me. It was a bit, a bit of a ruckus between them. No, that just didn't really, I mean, I think Gary, I, I did feel for him. I mean, obviously he wanted the attention of his, Gary was a mummy's boy. He had mummy right under a, right under his thumb, yeah. And he couldn't get that with dad. I could. <laughs> and, and that, you know, that was the bottom line, you know. Um, get over it. I always had Gary's back, you know. Um, I tried to help him. I, I Honestly, my dad knows I was always sticking up for him. But he just... When, when Gary was near him, he just used to get, he just didn't, they just, they just didn't gel. But, you know, Gary, uh, he's had his own family now. He's a good dad. You know, um, he's done that on his instinct. 
Yeah. But he never had the same relationship with his father as what he should have, or nothing like what I had. Yeah. See what it is with, with the other one, he's so good at integrating with people. He'll con Gary, no disrespect to you, Gary, he will con you, he's con, con me, he's conned all the others. Uh, he'll tell you everything, which gives, which, which tell you he'll get you the stars and everything, and he doesn't do it, he doesn't pay you. We don't caught with them now, with them, um, a massive court here and thing. Um, he hasn't paid us for our books or anything, he's just, uh, just a little, he's horrible. So that's what's going to happen to you, Gary, I promise you. I'll just say to you, Tina, um, you found out recently you had, a, you had another brother. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Mason, he's here somewhere. He's yeah. come to support me, but I don't know where he is here somewhere. Do you know what? I got this, I mean, I got this uh, text message out of the blue a few months ago, and it was Mason's girlfriend. And she was saying that, you know, you got a little... Anyway, after all the shit that I went through with Dad, you know, when you think, oh, here we go, you know. And then, anyway, kind of long story short, um, yeah, I've got a little brother. Dad was 65 when he conceived Mason, and the mum was 23. So, obviously, it was a casual fling. It wasn't a relationship. But his mum got pregnant... Uh, didn't tell anyone. Dad didn't know about it. She didn't tell anyone who the father was. Um, she was scared. She had this child knowing that she was going to be doing it on her own. So total admiration for the woman. And she's done a fucking good job. This boy, he is um, well-mannered. He's polite. He's respectful. And, oh, my God, Brian, out of all of us, he is more like my dad. Yes, when and you were him, did you think, that, that's my dad's son? Well, I know he is, because when he first walked in, I knew. I didn't need no test. But poor Mason, I mean, his mum wouldn't tell him who his dad was because she was trying to protect him. Mm. And they had a row. I mean, he's 19 now. And, um, yeah, so now, he, he, yeah, so now he's, he's sort of researching everything. Um, I've forgotten what you just asked me. What did you just ask me? About, about uh, Mason. Um, did you know, as soon as you seen him, he was your dad's son? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so... Yeah, so I knew he was my brother. Yeah. But he said, oh, love him. He said, look, it all seems too good to be true. I'd like a DNA. Right. So um, obviously dad's not here to do a DNA. But I am. And so is his mum. So we did the DNA. And, I mean, but before that, we've got to know each other. I mean, we text every day. We speak every day. And Brian, I love him. I love him already. And there's such a connection. It, I had a connection with dad. I didn't have it with Gary or my mum. I had, a, I've got, I had a connection with Dad, and I've got that same connection with three of my kids out of five, you know. Um, and there's a definite natural connection with Mason. And like, it's got natural things, like, you know, his expressions. And, and, yeah. and I mean, like when, when we first started talking, I was in a hurry. I really wanted to meet him, and he wouldn't meet me. He had this thing in his head about the eighth. So I said, well, why are you waiting to the eighth? And he said, well, no. He said, before I meet you, I, I want to get my hair cut. He said, because first impressions are important. Now, that is what my dad would have said. Your dad. <laughs> I'm going to give him a shout. Hang on a minute. I'll get him on because he should be on there. Mason, come here. Come here, I want you to join me for a minute, darling. Uh, Come sit next to me. Come on, I won't bite you, I promise. <laughs> Come sit next to me. This is Brian. You're right, Brian. Come, Come in. Can you see him? So you all right? You're right. Yeah. This is this is my Mason, and he is a little ray of sunshine, isn't he? <laughs> And don't be shy now. Your, uh, your sister isn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so oh, no, I love him. I love him so much. And look, don't he look like his dad? It's like a gift from God, isn't it? He is. And it's like my dad said, don't worry, darling, I've got you another one. And my dad wouldn't leave me here unprotected. And I tell you, well, this is my new protector. <laughs> <laughs> he is such a man. Honestly, and like, without... It's all natural to him. He, he, without trying to be like him, he yes. just eats. Do you know what I mean? He, he really just eats. Very smile, them other way. <laughs> yeah. 
So what's it like? Yeah, he's come here to support me today. I mean, you know, what a brother, huh? Yeah, yeah so is your big sister looking after you? <laughs> yeah, she is actually a lot. Really. Yeah. yeah, that's what big sisters do, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, yeah. they never come for money. His mum, I mean, I was expecting if there was any kids out there that they'd come when, like, Dad had died. Right. Nothing. She didn't, they, they don't want any, all he wants to know was his other half of his family. You know? He didn't get anything. But I did. And I'll make sure that I look after him. Because if my dad was here, I know my dad would have given him to me to look after anyway. Not that his mum doesn't look after him. She does. But he needs the other side of his family. He needs to know where he gets his isms from. And we've all got isms, haven't we, Mason? Yeah. yeah. Who's got the most isms? Don't know. Me probably. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on, you can go. Home. So, You're so shy, bless him. When we come down, thank you for doing that for me, darling. That's I love right. you. Only on the Brown Couple show, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's me. It's there, and I honor to speak to you. So, anything else you want to say before we go? Jamie Boyle and Gary are rubbishing Katie Cray book, right? Saying that um, Dad wasn't happy with it. I'd like to make it very clear that that's not true. That's good, yeah. Like I said, I'm not into fame and fortune, but a good friend of mine, Joe Pyle, he um, has approached me um, and I'm happy to help. I'm happy to go on board because um, if I'm going to be representing my dad, I think he's picked the best one to represent him. He has, he has 100%. Yeah. Um, 